thank you. It's an honor to be here. And uh, I do, uh, I represent myself. I don't represent a country. I have no official uh, position. I am heading a think tank. But. Uh, Very important think tank. <laughs> Very important, of course. Thank Very you. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm just uh, following since the morning that presentation and discussion focusing on non-state actors and, uh, and not mentioning the state actors uh, whom also promoting and encouraging uh, the terrorist group in the, uh, our region. You were talking about Russia. Nobody mentioned Iran, what she's doing in our region, and the role of Iran in uh, creating a vacuum in Iraq, which is vacuum in Syria, where all terrorist uh, groups are flourishing there. And uh, before I start, of course, I changed <laughs> since that, so I changed my uh, presentation towards shedding lights on the terrorist group from both sides. Because now I'm, I'm just uh, hearing only focusing on the Sunni sides, which, which is OK. But there is also another side of terrorism in our uh, region, which is Shia side, Shia militia also, what they are doing. What Hezbollah is doing is, is, uh, is not less violent. Uh, than, than what ICE is doing, but the media is not focusing on that. The West is not, focus, not focusing uh, on that. So I think uh, the spread of the terrorist organization linked to countries suffering from failure of nation uh, state. This is uh, uh, obvious in Libya, obvious in uh, Iraq, uh, Syria. So therefore, these groups have uh, not flourished depending on, the, on their own capabilities, uh, rather than as an outcome of struggle and failing policies uh, of the nation states. The second thing, uh, if we are talking about ISIS, ISIS uh, seeks the control of a new areas through three stages. First, the exhaustion uh, faced by uh, transforming the, the area into failing one. That was uh, obvious in Syria and Iraq and also in Libya, you can. And the second thing, the, the management of uh, savagery phase. And the third is the empowerment phase. There is another aspect which is, uh, and nobody also shed a light on it, which is the lone wolves uh, phenomena, which is initiated uh, a new phase in the threat of global terrorism. Social media and the internet have facilitated the rise of these trends, which, which now, uh, the, the ability of ISIS uh, to, to recruit uh, people from all over the world and no need to join ISIS there on, on Iraq or uh, on, the, uh, on uh, Syria. And as Sunni uh, terrorist groups are basing their motivation on the ideal of Islamic Caliphate, Shia terrorist groups also motivated by the idea of global government of Imam Mahdi, what they call it Mahdawiyya. Both sides have uh, justified their ends with religious interpretations. Now, leaders of Iranian revolution have moved the Mahdism doctrine into an active ideology. Since their rise to power, they have adopted a strategy of uh, designing landmarks for the return of Imam Mahdi by aligning geostrategic uh, trajectories of the regime with 
uh, prophecies of doctrine narrations. One uh, of the means of this strategy was to form and support terrorist militias in Iraq, Syria, and other key points in the region. Of course, this is based on the Iranian geopolitical projects uh, which uh, uh, stands on uh, weakening the neighborhood. Before 1980, I don't think Hezbollah uh, will gain any power without the Iranian empowerment. So using a similar pattern to Sunni terrorist groups, Shiat groups targets failing states where struggle is the main challenges, Iraq and Syria, however, and also Yemen. However, the latter follow uh, the guardianship of the Jews' uh, burdens and its link to Iran's geostrategic and expansionist objective in the region. So, media outlets are a pillar, the strategy of extremist and terrorist organization. Uh, we had an event uh, done by our think tank called Abu Dhabi Strategic Debate. There was a session about terrorism. And uh, one of the findings that a most underdeveloped group like ISIS using the most advanced technology and see the dilemma how it is. So, uh, also, the airstrikes led by U.S. and the coalition against ISIS affected only the organization facilities, the campaign. However, it did not eliminate it. The large number of European Muslim youth that joined terrorist group, as Mr. Dahlan mentioned, uh, most of them became lone wolves. And this is also showing, or it's an evidence of failure of integration policies in Western countries and the inability of Islamic institution to create a model for European Islam. So if you are now under the pressure of public opinion to react regarding what happened in France, I think short uh, run, uh, policy will not, will not help you anymore. If you didn't uh, revise your integration policy, your education policy, your economic policy. I'll give you here an incident. I heard it from a, a, a Belgian girl working in our embassy. She was telling me her friend had, has two masters and she left for six months, she didn't know about her. After that, she got a message telling her, I am in Syria, I'm working for ISIS. Yes, I lost half of my freedom, but I got a job. I was, I was struggling to find a job in Belgium. For one year, I couldn't find a job. So, radicalization of European terrorists and fighters often occurs in three places place of worship, jails, and online. According to statistics, 90 of jihadists were recruited through the internet. Now, as what we do in our think tanks, we always present in our policy papers the causes and scenarios and recommendations. I have scenarios based for the Sunni, uh, groups and for the Shiite groups. If we start with the Sunni groups, the first scenario can be succeeding in containing and eliminating uh, terrorist groups. But these scenarios will depend on the ability of MENA region countries and the international community to agree on comprehensive strategy to fight terrorism. Comprehensive doesn't mean only military or uh, security policy. It means education, 
as also what Mr. Dahlan mentioned. You need, if you want to counter an ideology, you have to have another ideology. What makes all these youths joining the uh, ISIS, this is had be uh, studies in, in depth. The second scenario, breakdown of large terrorist group into smaller one. So the, uh, it means the, the airstrikes against this organization accompanied by elementation of senior leaders might lead to break down the large group into smaller groups. Until now, we didn't see this. The, the last scenario is expanding terrorist group through alliances and regional networkings with the failure, with the fragmentation of the state in the MENA region. Now, for Shiite group, first scenario, status quo continues and uh, resumption of expansion and medium uh, uh, term. The, the second, degradation and uh, regression. The third, uh, no, the, but this means that Iran, Iran abandoned its sectarian policy, especially after the decisive Arab stands in Yemen and the increasing cost of Iran expansion in the region, but this is means that IRG uh, or Iran will be a normal state after the nuclear deal, which did not focus on the Iranian intervention in our region. It was only uh, for Ashton and uh, Obama focusing only on the nuclear side, uh, which Iran, I think, uh, exploit by more uh, meddling in our affairs. Now, if I move to recommendation. I think all parties, uh, MENA region and international parties, including NATO, must agree on a procedural defini definition of terrorism and terrorist movement and create a unified list of terrorist groups. Second, the military campaign against terrorist organization must be accompanied by comprehensive uh, strategies. Security policy must be based on two elements. First, preparing a comprehensive database for all members or supposed member of the Salafist jihadist terrorist movement. And second, adopting a new mechanism for coordination among various regional and international security uh, agencies. Until now, we have not complete data base. Also, enhance national belonging of Shia minorities in the Arab Gulf states. Move the dynamic of Sunni religious towards peaceful co coexistence with Shia beliefs and prevent any attempt to exploit Shia Sunni difference in the uh, occlusion and extremism project. Countries also must take measures to prevent terrorists and fighters from traveling abroad, what Mr. Dahlan also mentioned. And this is also I've been heard from many Europeans, that you've been monitoring your people going and coming without taking any action. So uh, instead also of targeting individual soldier and terrorist group, all countries must focus on the terrorist leader, the generals. These are uh, whom you have to target them. So also intellectual efforts to combat terrorism must be uh, not limited to official apparatus. Instead, all segments of society must take part, like think tanks, like NGOs, everybody, and of course the religious uh, institution. Public and private media outlets must draft a charter on how to deal with actions and materials of terrorist organization. Develop tools of cyber war to combat online propaganda by terrorist organization. Tighten local, regional, and international monitoring over financial transfer to countries where terrorist organizations exist and control legitimate transactions to sell oil, 
antique, uh, antiques and gold in hotspots. With this, I again also, you have been monitoring Turkey and monitoring a, a terrorist group coming from Turkish border. Nobody took an action. All, although Turkey is from the NATO uh, member and also selling oil, selling everything through Turkish border. And by the way, I said, you are uh, talking about a Sunni fanatic group. Did not, did not attack any borders of Iran until now. Jails also must be under intelligence civilians to avoid turning into breeding grounds for terrorists. Prisoners who complete their sentence must undergo a long-term monitoring system. Arab diplomacy and media outlets must focus on the threat that Shia's terrorism represents through active Milit militia in Iraq and Syria. This public militia, public Shiat militia, it's not more than terrorist group wearing a mask of defending their people against ISIS. So the world must not be decided by diplomatic facade of the Iranian regime because it arranged its geopolitical priorities according to the prophecies of Mahdism as part of project to destroy an annual uh, countries of the region. The last is the ideology of global government of Imam Mahdi must be studied and discontract and deal with, the, with it as one of the fundamental source of terrorism and destruction threatening uh, global instability and uh, peace. The last word, terrorism has no religion, has no color, has no base. So it can be in any place. So please, reacting towards Muslim will create another Islamic phobia, same like after uh, uh, September 11th in United States, and it will harm your society more than what it is now. Thank you very much.